Hey guys, what is up? Sloppy here, and today we're doing a redstone tutorial. This is something that I recently built on my single player. Um, the link will be at the end of the video. It is a stopwatch, or I guess I use it as a speedometer. What it does is measure a length of time between a redstone pulse. So uh, here we're using uh, tripwires, so from one end to the other. So that's how I used it as a horse track, so you can run through, measure how fast the horse is. You can also use it as a stopwatch if you're playing mini games and whatnot, or there's a lot of applications for it. And what this is, is actually the speedometer with a display. We're using redstone lamps. You can do other displays, but that's the one we're going to focus on today. So let's get into building it. So the materials I labeled into three different sections. We have the actual start line this would be your input so this is adjustable this could be a button this could be a lever i use trip wires this is the t flip flop that sort of controls <laughs> um a big portion of it and this is the display that will tell us how fast we are going or how much time has passed all right guys so let's build this on camera for an input we are actually going to use the starting line and finish line with tripwire hooks just because i think it's a little more fun than just a button but this could easily be replaced with a button so don't uh <laughs> don't let that fool you so we're just going to do a simple tripwire setup so if we say this is our finish line and we're going to run the wire from underneath the block this is how you get tripwire the power and we're actually going to run it all the way back over towards our starting line because they actually activate sort of at uh, the same time. So we're going to run this over to here and this is going to run into our T flip flop. All right, so our T flip flop is a very simple design. We put a redstone torch one block below. You put a redstone piston on either side like this and one block here and then two blocks on top of that, some wire running across the top and then a redstone torch on either side and the way the input works the reason that I brought this line all the way over here is that we input into this block right here now you can easily do this um, from both sides you know we could uh, have brought this line this way and inputted it from this side I just find it easier and a little more clean to just bring the line over because our output is actually through this block right here so this is the output that's going to the clock so we'll just do that for now and to activate this I mean we can just use this and actually right now it's off so this would be your starting position so we'd run through the start line and flip it the other way that gives our outputs and then the finish line would activate it again and it would turn off so now we just have to make the actual clock component all right for the clock component um, in the actual design uh, if we come over here and look at one of the two that's over here this is the part that most people would get decorative with so when you're actually adjusting where this clock is going to be what you're going to adjust is this line right here which is the input that we built um, the output that we built coming out of the t flip-flop is what you can move around so if you want to move this um, you can just you know throw it over here if you want your clock you know if you want this all behind your clock you build your clock right here or if you want your clock over here or above this is the line you would move um, that's important to note just because the rest of it can't really be moved. You can move the line and move the T flip flop all together, but the easiest part to move would be from here and to put the actual clock design wherever you want your digital clock to be. So without further ado, let's build the actual clock. So we make the output signal from the T flip flop and input it into a redstone torch and we put a hopper facing into the ground and then one facing into that. And this hopper is actually locked. So what we can do now is grab a stack of items. Let's just use um, a stack of stone. We put a stack of stone into the first. You can put five stacks or however many you want. The, the maximum is five. If you put five, then obviously you'd get the max time available. For everything I've used, I've never used more than two stacks of items when measuring the time with this device. But either way, this is uh, the start of your clock. You put a comparator coming out of the second piston that's facing down and you put redstone line coming out of the comparator with a repeater at each section going into a block. And then I'm sure you've guessed it, but on top of those, you put your redstone lamps. So that's the actual digital clock. And now what happens is when we run through here, <laughs> we're gonna run through it backwards, but if we run through here, what happens is the redstone lamp gets turned off, the clock gets started, and the amount of items in the hopper is measured by the comparator and it sends out a different signal strength. So you can see the second light just came on at around 
20 items. The third one will come on, I'm assuming, around 40. Well, no, we're at 40 now. Okay, around 45 it came on, and so on and so forth. So if you are using a ton of items, you just extend this down um, as far sort of as you want to go. And that's your digital clock design. I say digital, it's with redstone lamps. You can adjust this, um, and then you can decorate it up. You know, something, it's a pretty easy thing to decorate. Uh, you just have to be weary that the block underneath the lights, so this block right here, uh, this needs to be a full block that can be powered by a repeater because that's actually what's powering the lamp. And then uh, if we ran through that way, we just run through this again and it turns off and then you can measure, you can see how far you went. So we got to three and then if you want an exact measurement, you come in here, you look at how many items are in the hopper and to reset this, you simply take the items out and put them in the first hopper. Now you probably could set up some sort of automatic reset after a certain amount of time. I haven't put that in. I wanted to keep this very easy, but this is a very simple design for a stopwatch or a speedometer, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I hope you got enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. Uh, the link at the end of the description is where I built it in my single player world. And I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.